Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Braided Faith Podcast. I am so sorry that I've been absent, you guys. It has been such a whirlwind of of life. <laughs> um, and I really struggled with putting this episode out into the world, but I'm going to. And I, it's something I've been praying on. It's something I felt heavy on. It's been heavy on my heart to put this out there and to really talk about the real life and real things that go on. And I'm not going to share like everything or every detail, um, but I feel like it's something I want to I want, I want to do, and I feel called to do, I feel led to do, I've prayed about it, and I really feel the Lord is um, nudging my heart to do this, and um, it is a little scary for me, um, and I don't know, I haven't planned <laughs> anything that I'm going to say, I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit guide me, and just, you know, pray that He will speak for me, Um because I don't know what he wants shared and what he doesn't want shared. Um, I did put together some tips that I'll go over on um, if you're going through what I'm about to talk about. Now, this is something that's not talked about often. Um, and I know this because as I was preparing to make some really, really heavy, important life-changing decisions i was researching on on google on youtube podcasts um one of my really good friends is going through the same exact thing i'm going through and we were sending articles to one another we still are um you know if we went across a youtube show or a book or something we're sending it to to the other um but as a woman of god as I was making some very, very important decisions, uh, my heart was really heavy because at the end of the day, I didn't want to disappoint God. I didn't want to do something that would go against who he is in my life, who he's created me to be and everything I have been basing my life on, which is, um, being a, a child of God. And so um, as I was researching, I would find secular t things on this topic. But if I'm quite honest, I didn't find a lot of Christian, to Christian topics. I mean, and the ones I did were were very, very helpful. Um, so give me just one second. I'm going to, I'm going to pause the recording for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. I wanted to grab a couple of scriptures, um, that have really helped me. Um, so my hope when I started the podcast back up in November was to be here with you guys. Cause I dropped these episodes over the weekend. My heart was to be present with y'all every weekend or at least every other weekend. Um, and I failed miserably. The crazy thing is, is that I actually do have episodes, solo episodes recorded, and I have guest episodes ready to go out. I just, I just didn't have the headspace or the heart space. I just had to kind of put everything on the back burner and just really focus on, on God, on healing on my little family here and just really just pour into healing my heart to be quite honest um it was a very it's been a very heavy few weeks and i actually don't even know if y'all can hear me i just realized my mic was pretty far away from me um hopefully that's fine and actually I do want to just check my mic settings real quick because sometimes 
Okay, it looks like we're good. Um, sometimes my mic doesn't pick up. Um, but hopefully it wasn't too far from me a second ago. But um, a topic that I feel like we don't talk enough about as Christians is when we have to put boundaries up with certain family members and or go no contact. And I needed, I needed an episode like this. And this is why I am doing this because I know I cannot possibly be the only one in the world that's had to made, make decisions like this. And it's been painful. It's been heartbreaking. It's been debilitating at times. I don't even know if that would be a proper word for it, but I have just felt, I don't know, it, it's, it's been quite heartbreaking. And this is where I didn't know how much the Lord wanted me to share or not share. And what I want to do right now is tell you that if you are having to be faced with this situation, whether it is a parent or a grandparent or an auntie or an uncle or a cousin or a sibling or an in-law, you're not alone. Life happens, you guys. And whether you are a Christian or not does not mean it is perfect or that family relationships are perfect or that you even know how to perfectly do something. And so if you are going through this right now where you are put in a situation where you are feeling like it's time for a change to happen and you don't know what to do, you're not alone. You are not alone. It happens more times than I think we even realize. I think people are just ashamed to talk about it, scared to talk about it because you don't want to hurt other people's feelings or you don't want to dishonor others, you know, especially when it comes to parents. You don't want to dishonor your mother or your father. And if it's, you know, family in general, we, you love, I mean, we love our families, right? And so what I'm feeling right now is the Lord doesn't want me to be specific on, on who I've had to go no contact with. And I'm going to honor that because that is what I'm feeling in my heart right now. And that's why I didn't know. I didn't know if I would get on here and he would just lead me to just share things or not. Um, I think for him, the most important thing is for me to just let my, my sisters in Christ know that you're not alone. It happens. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you are a disappointment. It doesn't mean you're cold hearted. I don't know what your situation is, but I know what mine was. And in the thick of where I was probably in a worldly sense, possibly needed the most is when the Lord pulled me back. Um, lot of situations, very, very hurtful and painful situations were happening. Lots of manipulation was happening. Lots of lying was happening. Um, lots of abuse, verbal abuse was happening. And in the world's eyes, it was probably a really bad time to walk away. But in prayer and in guidance from my amazing husband, <laughs> Um, a decision we made was it was time that a change needed to happen and that I could no longer be exposed to abuse any longer. 
Uh, my mental health was declining. I was finding myself in bed um, extremely depressed, unable to eat, unable to move. Like there were moments, there were days where I felt chained to my bed because I was so heartbroken and so confused and so just unsure of what was going on or what was happening. And um, at the end of the day, it was abuse. I was being mentally and emotionally and verbally abused. And um, I'm no longer a little girl. And so when we're little, sometimes we have no choice but to just be around abuse. Unfortunately, many of us were abused as children, um, whether it was a grandparent, a parent, a sibling, a, again, an auntie, an uncle, uh, you know, like when we're children, sometimes we don't have a choice but to just sit in the abuse. I'm not a child anymore. And so I had to make a decision to say no more. I'm a wife now. I'm soon to be a mother. I do not have to be abused any longer. I don't have to be manipulated any longer. I don't have to deal with that any longer. I have my own family now. I have my own home to manage, my own marriage to prioritize. And it was a very, very difficult decision, but it, and it was not a decision that my husband and I took lightly, but we knew it was time. Um, as we're, you know, <laughs> as we're soon to be parents, we had to make that decision that, it, it, you know, we have to put our family first. And um, sometimes you have to realize, I, you know, I can't even let my family be exposed to certain things. And um, it was a hard decision. But when my husband found me, spending days in bed because I couldn't get up. It was something he really had to think about and pray about and say, we got to do something. I, I can't, I can't let my wife go through this anymore. And I had to love myself enough and love him enough and love our future child enough to also know that wasn't something I could allow in my home anymore the oppression, the depression, and all of it has stemmed from a, but it's your family mentality. It's your family. And again, I'm not going to say specifically the family member. I really am feeling right now that it's not the time. So I'm going to like, just honor that con that conviction and discernment, more discernment than conviction. Um, because I also think that there might be a time um, when I do name the role in my family that this person or people sit in, um, if that makes sense. But I want to give you guys some, some tips if you're going through this, um, and I'm going to give you some scripture, um, some scripture to just help you on this journey. And I, I believe that these scriptures can um, really help as you're navigating through what does God want for us as God's children? Um, does he want us to forgive? Absolutely. Does he want us to sit in abuse? I don't think so. I don't think our God is that kind of a God. Um, I believe that there are ways we can love and honor our family without exposing ourselves or expo exposing our own family who are supposed to be our priority once we get married. Um, there are ways to honor and love them without being in connection or community with them. I strongly believe that and stand by that. So my first tip for you is to pray, of course. Pray, pray, pray. Seek God. Seek first the kingdom of God and 
really ask him, share your heart with him. Don't be afraid to share every aspect of your heart, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the messy, the confused, all of it, share it with him. Ask him to come in and talk to you and help you and invite him in this with you because you don't have to do this alone and he will be with you. Second, forgive. Whatever may come from your prayer time with God and whatever decision you might have to make, whether it's just setting extremely hard boundaries and maintaining those boundaries or going no contact. Um, you have to do it in forgiveness and you cannot do it with an angry heart. And so as you're praying, releasing it to the Lord, asking him to come in and help you to forgive and to show grace and to walk with you as you're making these tough decisions and let him know, I don't want to make any decision out of anger or based off resentment or hatred or bitterness or any of those things. Make sure you get your heart right. Forgive that person. Forgive yourself for feeling any, you know, messy feelings. Um, and I personally did not make any decisions until I felt complete forgiveness in my heart. And that I knew when I walked away, I would be able to walk away with just love and gratitude and hope that one day it doesn't have to be no contact. One day God can bring reconciliation in his timing and in his way. And because we're all seeking first the kingdom of God. Um, and so pray and then make sure you're forgiving. Tip number three. And I this can go with any family member, but understand what honoring your mother and your father as an adult really means. And you know, and I, I know we want to honor all of our other family members too. And so I feel like a lot of times when we're struggling with certain decisions on keeping family members in our life or not keeping them in our life, a lot of it goes back to that, like honoring the people in our life that we love, that we've, you know, that have we've grown up with, that we've um, shared memories, that we've shared tears with, that we've shared fights with, that we've shared joy with. I mean, when you go no contact with somebody, it doesn't take away the, the goodness. I mean, there's love there. There's memories there. There's, you know, a connection. Otherwise you wouldn't be struggling with a decision, you know? Um, so really try to understand what honoring your mother and your father and your other family members means. Um, and for me, it finally came down to honoring the people in my life means that I don't hold grudges against them. I forgive them. I pray for them. I acknowledge their role in my life. Um, I, I'm never going to be like, you know, you're no longer X, Y, and Z in my life. No, I honor that. I honor that you are so and so in my life. But unfortunately, right now, um, I still acknowledge you're that role, but cannot play that role in my life right now because of the different abuse that has been happening and the different, you know, painful things. Um, it's just not healthy for me or my family. And and I want to go into scripture here um, because I think a lot of times we don't understand that when we get married, we cling to our spouse and we make a new family. Now, I'm not saying just because you're married, that means you no longer go to Auntie Jojo's for Christmas, or you no longer go to Grandma Sue's for Easter. You know, what I'm saying is 
Your priorities have to shift. It's biblical. And it just makes things work better. Your priority, your family priority, the look of your family, your immediate family changes. Your immediate family is no longer mom, dad, brother, sister. Your immediate family then becomes your spouse and then your children if you bring children into that. And then when they go off and get married, they are no longer your immediate family because they go off and they create a new immediate family, which means that family is their priority. And we should want that for our children and our children's children and our children's children. We should want it to keep growing like that. And I think that we have it so messed up these days where we are still so obligated and prioritizing auntie, uncle, grandpa, grandma, our mothers and our fathers, our siblings when we're married. And again, it's not saying they're no longer important and you just do away with them. That's not what that means, but it just means your priorities are different. Honor looks different as adults than what it did when we were children. And so um, honor your father, father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, 12. But then we have Matthew 19, 5 through 6. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. So for me, when I thought about these different things and what it looked like to honor my family as an adult, to honor my mother and my father, to honor my you know, sister to honor my aunties and my uncles, um, you know, just everybody in my family. I'm not even right now talking about one specific person, but I had to really take into account. Am I honoring everybody in my life, even my friends? Am I honoring my friends by not holding grudges, by forgiving and being the best sister in Christ that I can be? to all of them because at the end of the day I before I'm a daughter I'm a sister in Christ if if we're sisters in Christ um before I'm a granddaughter I'm a sister in Christ before I'm a cousin I'm a sister in Christ before I'm a niece I'm a sister in Christ and so I only know how to be a good sister in Christ that's honoring to God and honoring to others if I am not, if I am making sure that my posture is correct and I am not holding bitterness and I'm forgiving. So if you're struggling with a parent and that scripture keeps popping up or even people keep saying that to you, remember that honoring your mother and your father as an adult means honoring that title, mother and father, being thankful and grateful that you were given life. Being thankful that whether they're a good father or a bad father or a good mother or bad mother, that God chose them for a reason. And there is goodness that, that has come out of that. And so for me, it's acknowledging the good things. It's Acknowledging the role, acknowledging the good things, um, and forgiving, completely forgiving and not holding bitterness or anger towards that person. Um, we're specifically talking about mother and father right now. And so not holding a grudge against your mother and your father. I've done a show on here on this podcast about forgiving your mother and your father and how unpopular it is, but it is vital to honoring them. We can only honor them if we are forgiving them. And then at the end of all that, we honor our mother and our father by being the best child of God 
that we can be. And in order to be a child of God as a married person, you have to leave your mother and your father and cling to your spouse. And so most, most of y'all are wives, are most of you that listen to this are women. Um, so I say person, if by chance there is a male listening to this, but you, you be the best daughter or son of God that you can be by, and you honor your mother and your father by doing what the Bible says and clinging to your spouse, clinging to your husband, women, clinging to your wife, men, leaving and becoming one flesh with them. And if you are a mother or a father, while we're on scripture, let's talk about Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, Colossians 3.21, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. So I feel like we don't talk about that scripture a lot. We talk a lot about honoring a mother and a father. But if you're a mother or a father listening to this, don't provoke your children lest they become discouraged. You shouldn't be responsible for discouragement in your children. And in Ephesians 6, 4, yeah, it talks about not provoking your children because you have to, dis or that you, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So when we're children, yes, discipline us. That's, you know, that's of course needed. But as adults, you don't even as children, there are proper ways to discipline your children, you know, and. You definitely need to discipline them, but there is a proper way to do it. But as adults, do not provoke your children. And this goes for all of us, whether we're aunties, uncles, I'm an auntie. Do not provoke my niece and my nephew. I cannot and should not provoke them. My little niece texts me calls me like she texts me several times a week um, and we talk often and my heart would never be to provoke her. Why would I want to do that? I would never want to discourage her. Now, do we have serious talks? Yeah, sometimes we do have serious talks. Um, she'll ask me serious questions and I try my best to guide her. Um, you know, unless it's something where I'm like, well, you should probably talk to your dad about that, which a, a serious question like that hasn't come up in a long time. Um, but my whole point to this is as adults, human to human, we should not provoke one another. Why? Why would we want to provoke one another? So I just wanted to throw those scriptures out there. When we're talking about what understanding, you know, what what honoring looks like as adults, what honoring looks like as a married woman um, or a married man. Um, again, not a lot of men listen to this, but if you're listening to this. Um, so. Pray. Do it in forgiveness. Do your decisions in forgiveness. Understand what honoring the people in your life really means. Number four, and I did this, you guys. Oh, I have amazing wise counsel in my life. Number four, seek wise counsel. I reached out to a pastor. I We went and had lunch. I reached out to some of my extremely close friends that know me, that know my situation. Shout out to my best friend, Julie. And my prayer partner, Heidi, I mean, these girls were vital. Um, they were a text away and they were a prayer request away all the time. 
Um, of course, my husband, I mean, we spent countless hours over coffee talking about things, really making sure that we were both understanding of what these heavy decisions would mean and how they might affect me, um, how they might affect, affect us as a family, how it would affect our our future family, our future children, you know, our future growing family and just really seeking God and, and, and seeking the people in our life that he has blessed us with. So seek wise counsel. And number five, don't take this decision lightly and specifically don't take going no contact lightly. I did not. It was a very, very, very important decision. I didn't take it lightly. Darren didn't take lightly. Um, we really made sure we were, we felt like we were on the right track. And so those are my top five tips. If you are going through a situation in life, and I guess this wasn't on my tip, but number six, I guess I'm just going to throw number six in there. Show yourself love, show yourself grace. And I know showing yourself grace, I know that is so overused, but it's, it's just a true thing. We have to show ourselves grace. Um, give yourself the time and space you need, because like I said, with number five, don't take it lightly. It's not a light decision to go no contact with somebody that you love, specifically a family member. Um, because also another part to that, that, that I want to make sure I talk about is you potentially could lose other family members. Um, and that's something you have to weigh. That was something Darren and I weighed very, very, very heavily is that it might cost us more than that one person. And that was a very heavy burden to bear. But the good good news is, is that we have God. We have Christ who's already bore all of the on on the cross for us. And um, that was another thing was I wasn't sure if I wanted to drop this on Easter weekend. I almost didn't. But I did because it's a holiday weekend. It's a very important weekend, obviously the resur resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And for me, it was it was actually important to drop it this weekend because holidays are hard when you're going through family struggles. Holidays are hard when you decide to put up hard boundaries. Holidays are hard when you've decided to go no contact. It hurts. But on a weekend like this, Easter weekend, we have to remember that we have a God who gave up his only son for us, who died on the cross for us, and who was buried and raised for us. And when we think about the heaviness that truth is, that should change us. That should change us from the inside out and it should want us to be free. So if you are going through something where you are not feeling free, you are feeling almost like you're captive. I don't even know if that's the right word, but you're, you're feeling chained, held back, oppressed attacked. If you are feeling those things, Jesus did not die on the cross for that. He died on the cross for you to be free. And that is where I ultimately had to come to a decision and realize I am not free in this specific relationship. I am not 
free. I am not walking out God's given purpose in my life. I've allowed the words and the things that have been said over me, the abuse, the manipulation. I have allowed for many years all of that to hold me down in chains, to stop me from truly living and being free in Christ. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you should do. I don't know if you should go no contact. I don't know if you should just set boundaries, but my heart aches for you. If you are battling a situation like this, my heart aches for you because I know I understand. But so does God. God knows. God knows exactly what you need. Seek him, ask him for help, pray, forgive, seek wise counsel, and know whose you are. You are a child of God. And at the end of the day, that is your most important role in life, is to walk in his light and to be free. I hope you all have had a wonderful Easter week. A wonderful holy week. Love y'all.